Okay, so here we are again, back in the reloading room. Um, we left off with some fire forming, and one of the things that happened last time I was fire forming is I broke the action loose on my fire forming setup. So I figured I would just take a minute to uh, show you how to set the headspace using a fire forming setup like this. And then I'm going to show you uh, one of the things that we were going to do is make a fire forming barrel out of this guy which is a seven and a half to eight or an eight to seven and a half gain twist Benjamin barrel. I just ran it through the bandsaw, cut the old chamber off of it. Um, maybe use this for a barrel fitting jig or something. That fits, actually it's set up right now for one of my gluing actions which is kind of a pain so it'll be handy to use it for a barreling jig. But I figured uh, what we're going to do with this guy, once we're, I'm in this fire forming mode, I'm also putting together a rail gun. And I've been shooting the rail a little bit, but I haven't got it to shoot good. And I've been using old brass. I've been using brass from another gun. And I decided, well, once I'm in this fire forming mode, and once I'm in this trying to learn how to neck turn on the lathe mode, I'm going to go ahead and show you, number one, how to uh, reset this this fire forming barrel here is uh, the one that we were using out in the yard here a while back and I fire formed a few and pop it broke loose. I never even got those boxes fire formed that day because I went on to something else. I figured once we're fire forming and turning on the lathe I'm going to go through another thing. If any of you ever want to see can I really shoot? If any of you ever want to see actual real high-end accuracy go to a match and learn about the 6PPC. The 6PPC is something you can't buy cases for. It is... see if I can get this guy to read. Gotta look down here at the monitor. Come on! Nah, it doesn't matter. These are 220 Russian cases. The 6PPC is made from something called the 220R, the 220 Russian. So what I'm going to do, once I'm in fire forming mode and neck turning on the lathe mode, I'm going to again try to recreate Jackie Schmidt's um, neck turning in the lathe scenario. He actually does it with the PPC. So I just loaded up a rack here. This is enough for, I don't know how many barrels. I'll throw a few extras in here because I'll probably wreck some. Put this back in my stash. Boxes and boxes of Lakua. I'm really big. I, I have got way too many leftover 6BR cases. The 6BR is a fantastic round. Fantastic round for me to learn with. A fantastic round to build on the 473 bolt face. And I've, I've kind of gone through my learning curve with it. I'm now regrouping and, and turning all my 6BRs into 6x47s. In this case, I just whack this guy off and... Uh, I'm going to use it for 6PPC, and this is where this experimenting thing gets really cool. Uh, the way we're going to do these cases, I should really drop this down. Um, you don't really need my face in here, you need to be able to see what we're doing. Somebody asked me in one of the other videos, why I had barrels laying here like this and I was talking about what we're going to do with these barrels and there was a couple of AR uppers here and somebody asked me what are you doing with those AR uppers why were they in there well they were there <laughs> they were there to keep the barrels from rolling off the table I value these barrels and I've got I don't know a dozen ARs kicking around here this is kind of funny I don't know if I've ever showed anybody this this is uh I digress a lot one of the reasons I have ARs is because I got some SOCOM uppers built by the, the guys that originally developed the SOCOM. 50 Beowulf. I think it can be a good thing. Well, I'm developing something I call the 50 Fart, which is this. It's a subsonic 50 BMG bullet running subsonic. Great little round. Really cool. Really neat. Take some 338 Lapua cases, chamber up a tight twist, 50, and subsonic, this thing will punch a hole completely through a truck. I mean, it is just 
Incredible. You shoot a 300 Winchester mag at the yard, which we shoot here a lot. So if you throw a can on the yard, shoot at it with a 300 Win mag or even a 338, it'll pop a divot the size of your fist out of the yard, right? Tear a hole in the yard. This thing will tear a furrow 12, 14 feet long, come out the other side and just keep right on going. Crazy what these big bullets do. And I could go off and try to talk to you about momentum and inertia, but I don't know anything about it. All I know is that you get this bullet going up to over a thousand feet per second and trying to stop it is like trying to stop a Mack truck. But one of the reasons I got, I got, I'm not an AR guy because they don't, uh, I have a few, of course. I think everybody should have at least 10. Uh, got them in all different sizes and shapes. But my dream was to put this guy on the AR platform. Well, the problem is it makes so much energy that it'll tear up even the AR-10 platform. So it's just funny. It's just interesting how the world works. I missed that. I didn't realize that. This is a subsonic round. My problem with it right now is that I can't control the recoil. I'm at an impasse right now because it's just kicking the snot out of me. But, anyway, I had some ARs laying here. I keep, you know, there's always ARs around. I was gonna, hoping to be able to make a little zombie popper out of this little tiny subsonic 50 cal and be able to put it on an AR platform. Not because I like AR platforms. I hate the AR platform. I hate the 45 degree, or the, the 1911 Colt 45 pistol grip. I hate everything about it. It's a two-handed gun. I hate two-handed guns. Um, this is something I had built a while back. I don't know if this has been on video yet. Uh, it's a shotgun with some special piston stuff in it. I'm going to try to control the recoil manually. i got a whole thing going over here. Because the thing just kicks. It just hammers. I can't... Uh, there's no way I can... No way I can shoot it usably. Anyway, that's the reason the AR platforms are laying here. Now i got a bunch of other stuff here so my barrels don't roll off. But anyway, while we're fire forming, I figured I'm going to make up some cases for the PPC anyway. I might as well show you how this is done. This is a completely bass backwards um, deal. This starts out, see, the 6x47 Lapua starts out as a 6.5x47. It's 6.5x47 Lapua brass. So, because it's 6.5, I have to neck it down. This, on the other hand, also ends up as a 6mm, but it starts out as 22. It's called the 22BR. I'm sorry, 22 BRs of toilets. <laughs> I looked over and had a brain fart. This is a 220 Russian case. This is what the true 6PPC case is formed out of. A lot of people have never experienced the PPC case. And I'm just here to tell you that uh, do yourself a favor, go to a bench rest match, meet a bench rest guy, find out what all the fuss is about the 6PPC. Because they actually are. A typical 6 PPC is actually more inherently accurate than a $3,000 laser transit. Deal with it. It really honestly is all that. 6 PPCs are commonly available that will shoot well under a quarter of an inch. And if you're going to win today, you better be down in the tenth of an inch category. Because with just a little bit of wind and movement, people are winning with aggregates under .2. I mean, the top 10 places might be under 0.2. And that is just phenomenal little round holes. So this whole PPC thing is poorly understood, except by the few hundred bench rest shooters that are in, that are out, you know, doing their thing. And it's a, it's a great thing. Bench rest is a great, but it's, it's poorly understood. And there's so much talk on the internet about accuracy, but no real... It's hard to find good facts. There's a few videos of guys shooting. You'll see a guy bangity bangity bang, and then you go see his target. Ooh, that's really cool. Anyway, what we're going to do here is something totally different. I'm hoping to set up the range out there so that we can fire in real time. You can see the bullets hit. There's no f foolery here, but rows and rows of tight little targets because aggregates are where it's at. A gun has to aggregate, has to be able to shoot five shots into the same area over and over and over and over and over to win. So while we're doing all this fire forming stuff, 
I figured I'm going to make myself up some of these. And this is done very differently. As I said, the 65 by 47 Lapua brass is squeezed down. I showed you the whole process I used, the guiding means. Now I'm trying to blow them out, which we're going to set up right here, right now. Reset this fire forming barrel. I figured, hey, what the hey? I've got this to use. It's going to accomplish a couple of things. I'm going to make a fire forming barrel with this. It gets used differently. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to nut it, I think, so that I can adjust it for my various things. I'm going to nut it. And the way these are done, you nut it and set up a crush fit on this case, and then you load a 22 caliber round, a 22 caliber bullet, into this case, and you rattle it down that 6mm barrel. As odd as that seems, it's perfectly safe. It works well, and it blows. The, the reason I do that is because I can't find a powder fast enough to blow out the 6BR or the 6PPC case unless I put a pretty heavy bullet in it. When I say bullet, I mean projectile. I mean wax doesn't work. Play-Doh, maybe. There are guys using Play-Doh. I almost, I heard from a reputable source that I can put a certain kind of powder in a PPC case and then cram it into a disc of, or a flat pie pan of Play-Doh and fill it up with Play-Doh or modeling clay for the full neck and that that can work. But what I know does work because I refuse to mandrel. I've done the mandrel thing, I've done it for years, or I did, years ago. Hate it. I am gonna blow these out. I am gonna blow them out using a 22 bullet, which I've got billions of, because I don't shoot 22 that much. Varminting is great, but varminting with 20, any more long range is the only thing that interests me when it comes to varmints, because with a good gun, any varmint inside of 250 yards, any varmint, any, Richardson's ground squirrel that you can see with the naked eye, if you've got good eyes, is like a gimme with a PPC class gun, with a gun that shoots like a PPC. You can pick the spot on the squirrel that you want to hit. It's not a challenge unless the wind is just howling. And then that's fun and it's good for wind. But I guess the point is, I, I, I'm just not doing 22 as much anymore. So, we're going to fire from some six PPCs. I'm not going to bore you by setting this up, although I'm going to Gordy this thing. I already Gordy it once. I'm going to Gordy it again. And uh, find out what it's like down in here with throat and the lathe, face it off. If I find anything interesting Gordying, I'll discombobulate the setup and re-Gordy it for you just so that you can see another twisted, turned in barrel. And the last thing that's going to be interesting, there's a question been on the internet from a guy up in Canada lately who would like to play around at 600 yards, and he's asking, what will the 6 PPC do at 600 yards with a 100 to 108 grain bullet? 105, 106, 108. This is uh, the, 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 the bullet of choice, the thing to use if you're shooting a 6mm. I've got some 6mm bullets all the way up to 123 grains that I'm playing with, but I don't know that that's going to be relevant to anything, but generally I shoot 105 to 108 grain. And he just threw the question out, hey, who's done with this, this with the 6PPC? I haven't. Well, now we're gonna. I'm gonna make a 6PPC fire form barrel in a seven and a half to eight or an eight to seven and a half twist. We're gonna probably not bore you with any more fire forming stuff, but I'm gonna I might show you how we're gonna do this, load some 22 rounds in here. 22 bullets with a hot load. Well, yeah, we'll find a load. 22 bullets though, that's the key. And rattle them down that 6mm barrel, blow this thing out, harden the neck, slap her on the mandrel, turn it to size, bada bing bada boom. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I'm gonna probably do, I've just realized I'm gonna go do another racket. I've got endless barrels. If I start shooting this PPC thing, um, I'm gonna start burning barrels. I haven't burned up PPC barrels for a while because the local competition turned out to be 600 yard. I have to drive a long ways. Not even that bad. No, actually I'm down in southern Washington and I'm two hours away from Seattle. I just have 
I haven't been able to get up to a chew with the Seattle guys yet, but time to start. Um, so I'll probably make another rack of these. I just realized why, why stop shit. Plus I'm gonna wreck a few. So I'll make up another rack and uh, maybe we'll blow a few out just to, so we can show you. And then uh, continue on with that neck turning on a lay thing. And in the meantime, it's gonna be really fun to have a tight twist six PVC. Don't know, it's not really good for anything. That's why it'll be a fire farming barrel. It will be a nutted scenario so I can play with some of the ideas that I have for locking up a nutted barrel. I, so far all my ideas haven't withstood the test of scrutiny. I keep coming up with things like fitted collars and recoil lugs and ways to keep that barrel from jacking around and uh, get all fired up and I think it over and it's kind of like making a hot post on the internet on your forum or your Facebook or whatever. Sometimes you sit back and think about it and it doesn't withstand scrutiny and you go, well, you know what, let's just not hit send on it. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that always hits send before that, but that's neither here nor there. Um, garbage. Uh, so, what I'm saying is, so far all of my hot thoughts and my ideas and my whatever have not panned out in the end, so I'm down to where I still have not got a fix for a nutted barrel. But we're going to nut another one. We're going to make a tight twist 6 PPC. We're going to make some PPC brass. We're going to turn it on the lathe. Um, I guess that's, I just wanted to, oh, I know what I got to do. I got four minutes here. I got to reset the headspace on here. Oh, okay, that's what this was all about. Remember, this one came loose. So, I take a feel on this gun here. Yeah, that's where I want to be. I take a feel over on this gun right here. I put these out ahead of time. So, all right. Yep, that's right where I want to be. Call it healing it, calling it thumbing it. Now I go over to this gun and I've got to set it. It's it's da 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 da. da. So I gotta run it down. Ooh, there we go. So now I put a big old nutter on here this time now. I think you can see it. Yeah, look at that right there in the corner of the monitor. I can see it. I'm pretty sure I got it. Run this up. Got a big nut. Crank this down. This is the one of the cool things about barrel nuts, man. You can do stuff with them. Now let's see what we got here. Did he get it right? Woo, let's swig it. Check it out, check it out. Now I'm gonna go get a brand new case. Another one out of the box here. Check out another one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's right there. It's exactly what I want. I've got the same feel now. On three different guns. Now, those of you who have grown up around headspace gauges, all the gunsmiths in the crowd, uh, everybody out there, laugh and you go, I don't care. Laugh away, people. I can shoot this case in here for 10 reloads. If the gun breaks, I can put it in that gun for 10 reloads. And I could do this with a bunch of different barrels. Three different 6x47 platforms right now. Seven, eight, twelve barrels. I don't even know how many barrels I haven't gone through. Some of them are old, some are new. Fire form barrel right here. I can set it up quickly and easily at any time. Right now I'm going to do one more thing. Earlier in some of the videos I showed you, well you know what? Normally what I use is hacky tape. My hacky tape's over behind the camera right now. So I'm going to bring this to the next phase. <coughs> Just to keep it from breaking loose. Because I'm weird. You might think this is hokey, but I do this on the lathe sometimes. I'll do this on the lathe when I'm turning case necks. Because I'm talking to the camera and I'm going around in circles, and all of a sudden I notice that I bumped that handle, and uh, my setting is off, and I just wrecked $20 worth of cases while I'm gabbling. So here's the thing I've got it tight, I've got this where I want it. Boom! Fix an Andy fire form trigger, man. There's something you won't see every day. Um, set for headspace again. Ready to go again. Ready to go out and make some noise. Fire form a bunch of cases. 
it's pitch dark outside. It's 10:30 at night, uh, but I just might go out there right now and make some fireworks. Um, the house is all full of kids gaming, and they. Uh, I'm not allowed in the house because oh no, gold guys allowed when everybody's land up in a circle, killing aliens or whatever they're shooting tonight. Probably something like uh, Super Mario Smash or something. Who knows? Don't care. They're having their fun doing that, and they're all shooters. So, it's all cool. I might go out and make some noise. But here, we just went over again. I reset the headspace on these three. I showed you what I'm going to do with the 6 PP. The 6 PPC thing's really exciting, guys. Anybody, and I'm just going to say this over and over until people listen. Anybody who wants to see accuracy. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what the knobbers say about those elitist bench rest guys. They're not. Screw that. Go to a bench rest match and watch the shooting. Watch what these guns can do. It will reset your clock. It will completely and absolutely change. And everything that you think you know about accuracy will go right out the window. And every guy there, if he's got time or can set up a time to do it, will let you shoot his gun. I'm serious, man. Check out the PPC thing because there is nothing like it on the planet. Now, trying to get other guns to shoot to that PPC spec or standard. Is he sent? Well, it's not impossible. I got a 30 over here that we might... Ah, that's a, it's, it's a totally different thing to make brass for. The 30 is a Hunter Benchrest specific cartridge, which means that it holds, I think it's 44 or 45 grains of water. It's the capacity equivalent of a 3030 Winchester. That was a, and it's an old competition. It's hard to even find them anymore. But I came up, took that same 6.5x47 lock bookcase and blew it out to 30. And I tell you what, uh, I will put, I said I would never use any names, but I'm sorry, Randy, from BIB Bullets. Dude makes some bullets that just flat fight to go into the same hole. If you get a good 30 cal, it will shoot like or better than a PPC. So 30 BR, 30 HBR, just do yourself a favor and find something actually accurate. Not all the crap you hear about, not all the ringing plates. I'm talking about little holes. Bang, 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 over and over. Reading the wind. You can see the wind. Pigs can see the wind. Bench rest shooters can see the wind. Shoot like a pig, man. Shoot like a pig.